Hi everyone and welcome to our ANZ webinar series, Smart Notebook 101. My name is Beck Woolno. I am an educational specialist for smart technologies. Uh, I am a teacher of 13 years and digital pedagogical coach. If you would like to connect with me on Instagram, uh, my um, tag is at uh, bsmartau and my email address are woolno at smarttech.com dot com if you have any questions queries or you would like me to follow up on anything with you today's agenda is to develop teacher skills in notebook and plan a where to next for professional learning our process we're actually going to have a nice slow walkthrough of notebook skills now um, I do say slow, but we will go quite quickly in this because there's a lot to cover in 30 minutes. However, this will be recorded and you'll be able to access the recording on our Ed to Ed webinar page at Smart Tech. Um, I will show you that before we end today. Um, the payoff is hopefully that I inspire you to build and create some inspiring lessons for your students and um, help you plan your professional learning around notebook and, and become highly skilled teachers in the use and implementation of notebook. Okay, before we get into it, just a reminder on our Ed to Ed page on smarttech.com, which I will show you in a little bit later, you are able to download a copy of your personalised uh, certificate for your hour, um, half an hour with me today on your webinar for your teacher hours. All right, so let's get started. Now, I will go quickly because we have a lot to cover in half an hour. However, you can slow me down, pause me in the recording, build with me if you like. So I do apologize for going quick now, but you can slow it down a little bit later. So my first thing is that I always customize my notebook page to what I like to use in my building. So when I say customize, we can customize in three ways. We can customise the toolbar, the pens and the My Content and we're going to go through those really quickly now. Now your actions and your toolbar are up here, your pens are just here and your My Content folder is up here. That is something that I didn't know about until um, very recently and it has changed the way I build. So the toolbar up here and the pens are very easily um, customised just by coming over to the blank space here in the toolbar and right clicking and you get a dialog box. Now another way to do that if you're not sure and you're trying to remember is going to view, toolbar options, customise and you'll get the same dialog box. Now it's as simple as clicking and dragging and dropping things that you do and don't want on your toolbar. I don't want the smart keyboard because I'm working on a laptop at the moment, I don't want to take up um, uh, a lot of space in my toolbar. Maybe I want to keep a transparent background. So I'm just going to pop it up there. The ones that I would suggest to have there is this full screen. If you would like, you can pop in and out of full screen really quickly without having to zoom. This one is my favorite, the dual single page display and the pin page. You need those two together and I'll show you how to use that in, um, shortly. And the other one that I quite like because I am um, someone who likes to try and keep things even and together and align is this align tool and I'm actually going to turn that on shortly. So that's our actions. If we go into our add-ons, I don't use them a, a huge amount in my building but you might in yours and then your tools you can see over here are your pen tools. Um, you can drag up any pen tools that you like. So if you want to bring up the eraser which is already there, um, something that's not there is a fill so I might bring that up because I might use that. Oh no the fill is there, a highlighter. Let's do a highlighter and drop it in there. When you're done, click done and now those settings are, uh, are changed and will stay with you every time you come in. Now on that, if you can go up to your account and sign in, make sure you are signed into your account. This is crucial if you are building any class lab activities um, and also remembers your customization of your um, notebook. Whilst we're up here, if you jump into help and there is something that you need help with or you come up with a great idea and you think that Smart should include that in their software, this little button here, submit feature request, it will be your best friend. I love it. Um, you can send in your feature requests. Uh, smarter, really responsive um, and really want to listen to what our teachers want in their software. So if you have a suggestion like um, voice tools in class lab games, then submit your feature there. Okay, now we've customised our toolbar and our pens. How do we customise my content? The my content folder sits over here in these tabs. Now the first tab you see here is the pages content and this helps you adjust the pages. So 
you can adjust the order of a page you can do plenty of things with this page so maybe I want to use this page and build on this page but I like the layout and I like the picture I don't want to have to rebuild this page from scratch so if I hit this little arrow here you can see all these things you can do with this page so um, you can insert a blank page you can clone the page you can rename the page and uh, I would suggest to try and name all of your pages um, when you get to the point that you are able to link pages to each other within the notebook renaming a page is really important deleting a page cut copy paste so on and so forth if you wanted to clone a page it's as simple as that and it will then clone that page and you can build on that I'm going to delete this now you can delete this in three ways you can go up and press delete page you can hit the little page delete button up here or you can simply select and hit delete on your keyboard when you come down to the gallery this is where we customize the my content folder but before we do that the gallery essentials is what comes with the software so when you download notebook you will actually have a full gallery or full plethora of pictures interactive um, multimedia notebook files themes and backgrounds and so um, you just you can come in here and peruse and have a look you can search up here and type in what you're searching for or you're looking for um, and then hit the, the search button here, don't hit enter, that won't search for you, hit the, the magnifying glass. Um, so you've got your pictures, interactive multimedia is where you have sounds or actions attached to that certain um, object. Notebook pages and files are um, pages that have already been created, so you can see there's dots there. Or the background themes now you might want to come in here as a teacher and find a theme that's going to every time you hit new page that theme is going to come up you can create your own themes that might be um, in notebook 101 part 2 um, where I show you how to do the themes but for now we'll just use um, the pop the pre-populated themes so it's almost um, St. Patrick's Day I'm going to choose insert on current page only and there we have it you can see that we've got a beautiful green color to build on with our shamrock, lovely shamrocks there. Now, I spoke about customizing your My Content folder. Up here is your My Content folder. If you're following on with me, your My Content folder is probably empty. Mine is actually quite full because I like to keep all of my graphics, all of my pages that I think are great and might want to use at a, at a short mo uh, moment's notice in here ready for me to pull out at any time. Um, all of my things that I've purchased licenses for from Teachers Pay Teachers or Teach Starter uh, are kept here. And so I have, I, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that now. So if you hit the down arrow, hit new folder. Now I love the Smart Monsters, so I'm going to make a Smart Monsters folder and pop in a graphic here. So I'm, it's as simple as building folders on your desktop, but we're just doing it in notebook so all of these expected behaviors you don't have to relearn any um, new procedures it's already all the same very self-explanatory so you can see my folder smart monsters there now I've downloaded Bolly um, our smart monster from um, uh, smart technologies her greatness is communication now rather than having to go and find Bolly every time I want to use her in my notebook I'm just going to drag and drop her here in smart monsters and you can see she's populated right there now if I wanted to use Bolly on this page I'm just going to drag her out and pop her here which is wonderful and now I can move her around I can do lots and lots of different things I can animate her I can do plenty of things to start creating a really beautiful page the next pay, uh, the next tab down here. So, sorry, just popping back. You can actually add full pages. So, if I were in, say here, and think that this is a fantastic page, this is great activity. I might pull pull this out um, for my students to use. I can take this page just by selecting it, grabbing it, and dragging it, and doing exactly the same making a folder or dropping it in the same folder and you can see now I have a notebook page that I can pull out at any time Now this is really fantastic if you're um, having lots of the lots of wonderful activities um, for your transitions or um, your um, fast finishes and you can pull out activities at a moment's notice you can see um, here in number I've got plenty of them and all of these activities that I can pull out for my students 
at a moment's notice that they can play and, and interact with or I can push up to the cloud and they can interact with on their own devices. The next tab here is the paperclip. Now the paperclip is quite handy. When you link anything in your notebook, be it a web address, a, a sound file, a, um, a PowerPoint, um, a video, it all gets stored here. Now I like to, when I'm building, say I'm building a unit on forces uh, for the whole term, weeks one to week 10 that I'm handing over to my teaching buddy, I like to give my teaching buddies everything they need. So things like the program, I'll drag and drop in there, whether it's Word or it's PowerPoint, and things like the student printouts, and I can pop them in here and they'll populate over. It's as simple as dragging and dropping or hitting insert, and you can say copy of file, hyperlink, or shortcut to file. Now my suggestion would be Never do shortcut to file if you're going to share your notebook with someone else. Always do the copy of a file because what it will do is it will actually bring over the actual file. So if you save it onto USB and hand it to your teaching partner, this file is going with it, not a shortcut to your file. So always do copy a file if you intend on sharing it. I like to do our student printouts as well so that teachers can come in here, double click that and then print that out for their, their students and they have every single thing they need for that term. The next tab down here is the properties tab. Now I use this a lot and I'm going to go back to my bully. Where is she? There she is. Here's our bully. Now, properties tab you can use for everything. You can use for the background, you can use for the objects on the page. Now, I've got no fill because I've used a theme here. So I might just actually add a new page so you can see that I can do um, a solid fill or let's do a pattern fill. I'm gonna do checks maybe. Let's do a lovely color. Um, let's pop it down here. I'm gonna pop it like that. I might bring Bolly over again. Where are we? Monsters, pictures, here she is. Fantastic, there's our Bolly. And then I might bring her over here. Now, the thing that I do like, I'm gonna turn alignment on and I'm gonna put snap objects to guides and show objects to guides so that if I do bring out another object such as maybe a shape, I'm going to change the color fill, I'm going to do the line color and let's change it to thick and like this. So I'm going to make a dialogue for my students and type in here. Now you can see my alignment is now coming up and showing me where it's sitting with Bolly or on the page, which is really fantastic when you're trying to align objects. Now, now that we're talking about objects, um, I can show you that you can actually animate objects. So I'm first going to bring Bolly to the front because I'd like Bolly to sit at the front of my object. So you can see that she's now sitting at the front. I actually might even animate Bolly. So I've selected Bolly, you can see by the blue dots around her. Now I can get to the properties tab either by going to properties and you can see the tab opens up or if I have Bolly selected, I can come over to the properties tab. Now you can see I can either make Bolly transparent if I want, but I don't really want to today. I might even give her an animation. So let's get her to flip around the axis or let's go right edge and then when the object is clicked and how many times do I want to repeat it let's just do it once so whenever I click on Bolly she's going to disappear and when I change the page and come back she should come back Now, if I want Bully to stay where she is, I can simply just lock her in place. Just like that. And now, by clicking on Bully and trying to move her, I can't move her. But I can move my dialog box here and I can pop in any text on top of that. Now, I would like my text to be grouped with this actual 
dialog box here. So I'm just going to select all of it. So if I run my mouse over it, you can see that the blue box is around my text and also around the object. I'm going to right click and hit group. All of these actions and processes are very similar to everything that you do in say PowerPoint or Word. Um, so again, not skills that we need to relearn, skills that we already know. Um, <clears throat> so in our gallery, we also have things called widgets and I'd like to show you that now because these are fantastic tools to use when creating. So widgets are interactive tools for teachers. So sometimes when I'm building a page isn't always self-explanatory and sometimes I need to leave little notes for my teachers or my students. So I might say week one um, spelling and these might be um, spin the wheel to find out your activity. And what I can do is I can actually choose where it snaps to. So I'm going to pop it in there away from everybody. Now the other widget I'm going to show you is our spinner. You can use the dice as well. You can customize dice with uh, letters, numbers, pictures, fantastic um, story starters if you want to. With our spinner, you can actually name the activities. So we might do Play-Doh spelling. We might do skipping, a physical activity spelling. We might do SSP piano. Um, and we might do uh, magnets on the floor. Or we might have a class lab activity actually class lab. Okay and what we can do is we can add a segment if we want or we can subtract a segment. Done there I'm going to move it round. I don't want my students to actually be able to move this so what I'm going to do is again I'm going to lock it into place. Now there are keyboard shortcuts for this. I'm going to pop that up there. I'm going to select this and move it around slightly and then what I'm going to do is I actually don't want them to move anything so I'm going to control A and select everything, um, unselect my widget there, pop it back in, all right and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to lock it. Now I can right click on both or I can hit the arrow down and press lock and now my students can only spin it. So now they can choose their activity and SSP Piano is their page. Okay, the last page I'd like to show you, the last tab I'd like to show you is your add-ons tab. Now your add-ons tab is really fantastic. I use these tools all the time. The YouTube recorder, uh, the YouTube um, app is fantastic. It is actually a YouTube search within Notebook. Now my favorite story is the very cranky bear. And I love the very cranky bear interview with Bob Monster. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. Um, it's quite funny. And we actually find out that, you know, the very cranky bear is probably not very cranky after all. He, we might have just caught him on a bad day. So what it is, is it is a white hat search. So you can see that nothing inappropriate is allowed to come in to the, the notebook YouTube white, uh, white hat search. It filters out any inappropriate content. When you select it, you can actually preview it here and see if it's the one you want to select it. You make sure that it's blue and hit add video and you can see that it comes in here as an object. Now I can control this. The best part about this is it actually has no ads at the start. It will not have any ticker tape ads over the top whilst it's playing and it will not play the next video after it. It is simply just this video. And so when I play it, and you won't be able to hear the sound because it's come, not coming through my microphone, but I can actually make it bigger. I can choose my pens and I've got my magic pen here and I can say let's have a look at Bear's face and do we really think that Bear is a cranky guy or let's have a look at his face and see how he's feeling. So you can actually interact over the top of these videos without interfering with these videos. You can see that we can draw um, over the top as well, rub out. Um, and control it from here. So if I go back to my selector, now I am on my keyboard, but if I did touch it with my finger whilst I was on the whiteboard, you can see that I can control it just by simply tapping. Um, 
on there and I can bring it down again. Now the other thing that you can do is you can do an image search, same applies, it is a white hat search within um, the search engine here. Um, the other features I love is Lesson Recorder and the Smart Builder Blocks. Now the Lesson Recorder I am going to show you in just a sec. The Smart Builder Blocks will come um, in probably our part two as we are running quickly out of time. The other thing I wanted to show you is that if you have say a page in another notebook like my role here that you really really like you can actually just pick up and drag the page over from one notebook to another you don't have to redo anything and you can see this is my um, Christmas roll and when I click the uh, the monsters they um, take off off the page what you can't hear is that a sound is attached to them so my students actually decided to attach a sound now that comes in the drop down box here and you can see sound they can either use a sound that they've downloaded or they can record their own sound and believe me they love it the biggest tip i will give you is do not let it go on corner icon always put it on the object so what i'll do is i'll actually show you that whilst i'm recording this sound um We'll start recording here, we'll record the sound and I'm going to actually leave it on corner of icon and what you can see is that we're going to attach the icon but to make the sound go you have to hit this little button instead of the monster. So if I hit the monster it won't make the sound, I'd have to come down here to hit the monster. Uh, to, to make the sound work. So always put it on object unless you would like it to not be there and you would like the students to have to come down here and hit the sound bar to make it work. Um, okay, so as far as the role is concerned, the way I created that was simply just using those skills that we saw earlier. I selected, hit the arrow down, I said properties and then I gave it an object animation and I said to it to fly out and then I gave it a direction bottom left when the object is clicked and now I can either click it and it go away or I can add the sound and then also give it an animation so you can make your own interactive role theme to whatever you're looking at for that term okay I use notebook for many different reasons. I will use notebook for my Monday to Friday structure of my day. So you'll see things like my role, my calendar, my literacy groups rotations. I'll have things in there that remind me to do movement breaks every 25 minutes. I will have my lunch and my um, daily timetable in there. But I'll also make uh, notebooks for full term units. So either our inquiry based unit that we're doing that term, um, sometimes Sometimes I break up our English units into spelling, reading, writing and grammar is mixed in with all of those. Mathematics gets broken up into focuses such as time, number, shapes and so on and so forth. So I can have a plethora of different types of notebooks. So just to give you a quick example of some of these, you can see this one is a template that I downloaded from Smart Exchange. You can go to content.smarttech.com. It is in beta phase at the moment. Um, it is being revamped and there are so many, so many great notebooks on this, such great content. Um, and so you can see here that all my students' names and I've got my alignment tool there to show you where to make sure that they're lined up. Um, I can move my students from one group to another. I have my widget timer in there, which I showed you from the widgets. This is the timer down here. You can simply drag it over um, to adjust this. All I do is hit the cog. So whenever you want to adjust anything, hit the cog um, and then it'll show you what you can and cannot adjust. You can add sounds to this. You can have it counting up or counting backwards. Hit play and off it goes now it's counting so by the time the 30 minutes is up a chime will go and our student leaders will come around and they'll actually move their activity down so they'll rotate the activities clockwise and I theme it to whatever season we are in the best part about this is and this is why I wanted to show you is that I can use my dual screen 
display here. Now, if I wanted this to stay up, but then have a class lab activity or activities for students to use during these rotations, all I do is simply split my page, which you can see is the dual single page display that I got from our customized tools. And I'm actually going to pin that page because when I say rotate pages, I don't want that one to move. So you can see now every time I turn a page, this page will actually stay, my literacy groups rotations will stay, and another page will appear. So here's a class lab activity that my students can play whilst the literacy rotations are up, which is fantastic. Another use case for this is actually having um, literacy um, activities or uh, inferential and uh, literal questions, so comprehension activities, which I think are fantastic. So having a picture of the text, much like we've got our um, cranky bear here, and we could have on the other side, we could have the questions for that text, and we could be using our pens to mark up um, what the question is asking us or the wording that we should be looking for in the text to answer the questions and we can also be marking up the text itself and talking about alliteration and talking about well using our magic pen to um, talk about whether we think it's sprinkling or whether we think it's raining heavily and we can have students come out and identify these these different language features in our writing, which I think is great. So um, for a more, um, for a higher group, you can, so, you know, year four up and you have quite a lot of text, you can have both text and questions next to each other to basically not only teach the content, but teach students how to read questions as well. That's our image search. This is our um, thinking critically. So all of the pens that you have here, and you can find a plethora of pens sitting in. So when you select pen tool here, you can see that this comes up. Now, if I go back to arrow, you can see that it disappears. If I go to pen, you can see it comes up. And now I get to choose a lot of different pens. So we have lots and lots of different pens. I'm gonna quickly show you the text pen. The text pen, here's my little, um, ledger here so if you draw a circle you can actually change the word now i am on my keyboard so um please on my mouse so please forgive me and we can type in monster it's a nice slow process when you're on a trackpad apologies for my handwriting this is obviously a lot neater and easier when you're using the smart pens and I'm gonna say, yep, perfect. Now I've missed a gap there, so I'm just gonna give it a little gap. There we go. Maybe I don't like that word. I'm gonna cross it out, delete it. And if you wanna insert a word, obviously you can draw that and then start typing your word in. The other magic pens that you can use, which I love, is the shape pen and our little ones love it. So I'm going to, in my best trackpad, I'm going to draw a circle and it's perfect. I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm going to draw, oh, that's an attempted square, perfect. And so it's a shape recognition pen. Again, select the pen, select the pen tools, shape recognition pen is down here. My favorite thing about the shape recognition pen, I'm going to select my circle. I'm going to, let's talk about fractions. How many? parts am I going to divide my circle into? Let's go six and you can see now that I can have six different pieces. And this is fantastic when you're talking about fractions, um, our square, you can do plenty of things with our square, you can show uh, the vertices, and talk about parallelograms and students can make as many parallelograms as they can. We can go to our triangle which is wonderful and we can talk about the interior angles. Maybe we'll want to talk about the side lengths here. And the best part about that is, is that it will actually recalibrate as you change the square, uh, the rectangle, uh, the triangle. It's been a long day. Okay, my last, oh, well, not my last, but two more um, before we end, because I am conscious that we are going slightly over time, is my infinite cloner. Now, infinite cloner I use all the time. I love Infinite Cloner for my students to do mathematics or spelling. So this is a spelling activity that I've used. My students are doing SSP, so we are looking at put it at and how many words they can make with 
these sounds and letters. So all they do is they come up and they grab the letters and they can make the sounds. Um, they can make the words, sorry. So the way you do that, my T I left so that I can show you exactly how to make uh, Infinite Cloner. All you have to do is select your object. Now this is honestly just a rectangle that I have drawn with the shape tool. I have put text over the top and I have grouped the two together like you saw me do earlier with Bolly. Um, and now that they're grouped together, I can hit the arrow down and this one here says Infinite Cloner. All I do is click Infinite Cloner and now instead of the T moving, I now have infinite number of T's that I can use to make lots and lots of different words. And I can have this set up as an activity for my students to use or uh, push it up to SLSO and have them do it on their own devices. This is me using tables and dices. Again, the widgets that we looked at. So this is the widgets here. I've simply changed the, the dice to letters and numbers. All I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the dice and numbers. I've set up a table here. The way you do that is this tool and you select how many. Um, and then I've just dragged and dropped pictures and numbers in there. So E2, my students now need to go to E2 and capture a monster and we're learning all about mapping. Oops, and I popped him in the number two there. And so I've captured that little monster. Then they roll again and it's F1 and they're going to capture and drag them out. And so we're playing catch the monsters and learning about mapping. This little one here is a lesson recorder. Now this is in your puzzle piece here. You can see lesson recorder here. Now if I hit play here, you can see that my handwriting lesson has been pre-recorded. Again, I've done this on the trackpad, so please forgive the terrible handwriting. It is very difficult to try and stay in the lines, do cursive, um, and work on a trackpad. So I can have this playing whilst I'm walking around as the facilitator of this lesson, walking around talking to my students about um, thumb placement, posture, where they're starting their letters from, where, how they're exiting um, their letters. So giving my students instant feedback on their handwriting and then being able to act upon it, um, improving student outcomes straight away. So here's my thirds. I'll show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to select my calligraphy pen and I'm going to do it in red so you can see. I've actually just gone in and coloured um, uh, the, the dirt, the grass, the sky because that's what we use at my school. I'm going to go into my lesson recorder. I'm going to hit new recording and you can see it started to record. Now I've chosen a bit of a thick pen here so I do apologise for that and again let's get Let's be adventurous and do a different letter. And I'm going to stop my recording there, down here. And you can see now, as soon as I hit play, there it is there. So you can imagine as a teacher, if you're not using um, textbooks or you are using textbooks and you want to put up a copy of the page that you're doing and actually do it for the students so you can show where they're working or how they're doing it, um, you can do your your full 10-week term handwriting lessons, one underneath each other, have it all set up, recorded already, have your student that does um, works on the board. So I, I have um, a, a smart student who works the smart board for me and they come up and they press play um, and that's playing whilst I'm walking around um, assisting my students in their handwriting making handwriting a really, really powerful lesson so that I'm giving them feedback and they're acting upon it. Really, really quickly, these are our maths tools. Um, you can find them here in the maths tools or you can have those individual tools sitting out um, working. This is my protractor. The way that you can use this is by making it bigger. You can make it smaller. You can see you can do the full side. What we can do is if I click the side, you can see this little arrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the angle of the Harbour Bridge. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the green arrow and I can bring it out and that gives me the angle of the Harbour Bridge. I can also use my ruler make it longer, I can switch its side so I can have centimetres at the top so you can use it and my wonderful protractor here that you can see and as soon as it turns into a pencil, 
you can work it like that. So all of these measurement tools that are really, really easy and now takes away the dramas of trying to hold them up on a whiteboard and using your pen and trying to show the students how to use it. It's all simply here, ready for you to go. All of these tools you can use outside of notebook. So um, the spotlight, the recorder, the screen shade, the keyboard, the screen capture, really, really fantastic tools. And, and we will do a part two of this Notebook 101 to cover any other features that you would like to see, such as the screen capture that we haven't seen here today. But to do that, I'm actually going to show you exactly how to find your certificate today. So what you need to do is you need to come into uh, Smart Tech. Technologies. Now you can simply just Google this if you like. Um, I'm going to go to the top uh, search results and then what it's going to do is it's going to take us to the Smart Technology website. So for you to get your certificate today for your, down, uh, for your webinar, what you need to do or if you would like to do any more professional learning on this and I would suggest um, there is a fantastic course for you uh, called Smart Digital Educator. If you go into support and then hit professional learning, it will actually or professional uh, development, it will actually take you to the training section of Smart Technologies website. So here you'll have your three options, tutorials, training and certification. Now I'm going to use some of our smart tools here. So you can see this little arrow up. Here's my little smart tools. I'm going to pop my screen shade on. Um, now I can just show you what I want to show you on the page so that I can block any information that I like so I can drag it over. Right now we're just going to look at the first one which is Smart Tutorials and in fact let's change that colour. So I'm going to go into Smart Tutorials and just show you that this grid here is just a grid of all of individual skills that you might want to look up. So things like working with ink in PowerPoints so and maybe you want to, maybe you've got a lot of PowerPoints that you've already created and you want to make them more engaging. So working with ink in PowerPoint, Word, um, game-based activities, that's a great one to learn about class lab, whole class instruction, flipped classroom is a great one, formative assessment shows you how to use response, graphic organizers is wonderful as well. So maybe you come in here and you find just a skill that you would like to do. If we go back and we have a look at, and I'm going to use another one of my smart notebook tools and I'm going to use the spotlight. So if we use the spotlight, I'm just going to bring it out a little bit further. And it's this one here, our training. So what you can see is if I click on the web page outside of the spotlight, it actually won't work. But if I go inside of the spotlight and I'm bringing my students' attention, now I can move my spotlight all around the page. So we can talk about I'd like you to go to this website, I'd like you to hit support, then I'd like you to hit professional development, and then I'd like you to go to training. Let's learn more about this. So in training, you actually have uh, – fully professional courses that you can do as a teacher. Now I'm going to scroll down within the circle in my spotlight and I'm actually going to come over here. This is the one that I would recommend for you to do. Now Smart Digital Educator has everything you need to learn about the boards, notebook and SLSO. So if I'm going to just get rid of my spotlight just for a second here and I'm going to come down to the modules. Now the first thing you can see is that you can see a login sign up button. Now if you haven't registered with Smart Technologies um, just as of yet, I would suggest to do so. All you need is your um, email address and your um, password. It's going to take me to a firewall. You might even have a school firewall. I know I did when I had one when I was in school. Oops, I popped the wrong email address in. There we go. And what it'll do is it'll actually log you in. And because the reason we do this is so that it can track all of the professional learning that you have actually done. And what it will also allow you to do is download certificates for every single piece of 
professional learning that you do. So you can see over here, getting started with smart boards, getting started online and getting started on the desktop. Now the desktop is the notebook software that you have downloaded. The online version is SLSO. So this is smart learning suite. This is smart learning suite online and this is how to use the smart boards. So for some reason, I have a little icon there, but not here and here. The reason is because I've actually completed this one and I wanted to show you the difference in what it looked like. So if I viewed the course here, in this course there's four or five modules. Each module has videos or interactive um, content that you can interact with and learn. My suggestion would be that if you're doing it with a friend or you're doing it with your staff, have it up on the smart board running whilst the teachers are there with their laptops open and the notebooks open and actually following along and building these things whilst they're learning about them. That is the best way to do it. And you can see I've got green little icons here saying I have actually completed that activity. Now because I completed that activity I can actually download my certificate. It's sitting up here, I can download this certificate, all I do is click and then I've got my personalised certificate with my hours, the date and the title of what I've done. Now if you complete the Smart Digital uh, Educator course. So this is one module in uh, the Smart Digital Educator course. So if I come back slightly, you can see there's three courses. And then if I come back even further, you can see that That is a full course. Now, at the end of these three modules, you will get a certificate, but you'll also get a digital, a smart digital educator badge that you can put at the bottom of your email address. Now, if you would like to find your um, certificate for your webinar, go up to hit explore offerings. And what will happen is you'll not only get the programs that SMART have created for you to work through, you will also get other courses that they have created and the webinars, access to webinars. Now you can see that there's a little check there, a little tick, because it's saying that I have logged in and I have actually watched this webinar. The best thing about this is you actually get access to not only the Australian webinars, but the global webinars as well. And these are fantastic as well. So what you can do is on Monday, when this is posted for you to rewatch, you can come into ed to ed you can come into smarttech.com, go to support, professional development, and then explore offerings. And when you have watched it now, I have watched this already. So it has populated my certificate. But for you on Monday, you don't have to rewatch it if you don't want. All you simply do is hit plus or play, sorry, scan it right along right to the end. And then what it'll have is it'll have a little button here that says click this and it'll populate your completed certificate. So if you do want to watch it again, good for you and build along with me. I've had a great time. If you um, um, have learnt the skills and you're happy with the skills that you've learnt, then fantastic. Click the link, get your certificate, hit download certificate and you'll get something that looks just like this ready for you to go. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do really appreciate it. If you are looking for content, a ready-made content, Teachers Pay Teachers is a fantastic site to go to. Um, interactive lessons by Susan Burke. Eightsall have fantastic lessons. Australian Curriculum, Scoodle, Cool Australia. My personal favourite is uh, the Smart Exchange, which if we go into the Smart Exchange really quickly before we go, you can see that it has a fantastic plethora of content already. Um, there is more being added every single day and it is being refined and ensured that it is high quality content for you. Now, in the coming months, we have some fantastic Australian Align curriculum content that is coming in and so you'll be able to search for that. You'll be able to go into um, the, the curriculum that you're looking at, the year level that you're looking at, the subject that you're looking at and have the Australian curriculum descriptors come up and what notebook files will sit underneath them and that is on its way. Now you can see here, here's the literacy 
rotations, one that I downloaded and customized and uh, for me, there's some fantastic stuff on zones of regulation. Peer reviewing is a great one. Here's a job organizer if you want one. Hundreds chart is brilliant. Handwriting templates. Teachers have come in. This one is a fantastic game. It's called Monster Whack-A-Mole. You throw um, a cushy at the at the board and it selects the, the monster that it hits. So you can see that there's some fantastic stuff there already. If you are building great uh, notebooks, we would love for you to add it here. All of our um, Smart Exchange friends are ready to receive those notebooks. Go through it, ensure that it is high quality for all of our other teachers to come uh, and download and um, and upload it for you, ready, re ready to share. So you'll get a global, global network of um, of teachers sharing content, but also for your content as well. You can see it is in beta phase. It will come into um, stabilized phase um, very shortly, but you'll notice that lots and lots of new features coming every single day. Okay, that's it from me. I've had a great time. Thank you. I do apologize that I've gone slightly over over time. If you do have any questions, again, I'm just going to pop my uh, contact details up here. Uh, it's be smart a you on Instagram I will know at smarttech.com please feel free to email me if you have any skills that I have not covered that you would like me to recover um, go over again sorry um, for our next notebook 101 part two please let me know I'm very interested in the things that you would like to see um, and it is a short amount of time to cover so many wonderful tools we didn't quite get there today but uh, uh, if you have any suggestions for next present Presentation, please let me know. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have fun creating. I'd love to see creations. Um, and if you do have any questions, feel free. Feel free to contact me. Thanks, everybody. Bye.